yun talaga yung nagpapakahirap. Yun yung mindset ng mga estudyante dito. Wala kang makausap. Ito yung mga kailangan na malaman nyo bago kayo pumunta dito. Hi, CZs! Hello, Zigsters! I just got home and... I just thought of making a video for you guys. This is about your question to me. Very interesting because ever since I have posted a video about me, kung paano ako nakarating ng Australia, and I've mentioned there that I came here on a student visa and nag-aral nga ako dito. But, um, the feedback has been wonderful, so thank you so, so much. And even with my latest video, and I'll actually gonna use that to my topic for today. So as you probably know already in the title, what we're going to discuss today is the very big question. Mahirap ba mag-aral sa Australia? Inisip ko, like, paano ko ba to sasagutin? Kasi ang dami nang tatanong sa akin ever since I started my YouTube channel. Mahirap pa mag-aral sa Australia? Mahirap pa mag-aral sa Australia? Mahirap pa maging student sa Australia? And lagi kong sila tinatanong kung what do they mean by mahirap? Because mahirap is subjective and it's a very broad topic. So naisip ko, gagawa na lang ako ng ganitong video to be able to explain it thoroughly, I would be dividing that mahirap topic into subtopic. So number one is cost. Mahal ba mag-aral sa Australia? Yes, mahal mag-aral sa Australia. And if mahirap, please watch my other video about me revealing my salary. I'll be putting the link in the description box and please watch it afterwards. I have explained there kung paano ako nag-budget noon, kung paano ko ba nabayaran yung tuition fees ko. The next subtopic is school. For me, personally, I would say very big yes because for so many reasons. A few of them are, number one, mahilig sila sa group work. As you probably already know from my previous video, Western Sydney ay naka-quarter siya. So, ibig sabihin, your subject changes every three months. That being said, every three months, nagbabago yung lecturer mo. Every three months, nagbabago yung mga classmates mo. And every three months, iba na naman makakasalunguha mo. Hindi mo alam kung yung classmates mo currently ay magiging classmates mo pa din next quarter. Depende kasi sa'yo kung anong gusto mong itake na subject on that quarter. Hindi talaga sila straight na kailangan mong itake itong subject na to for, for this quarter, tas ito sa susunod. For example, bibigyan lang kayo ng like 16 subjects to take. Nasa sa inyo kung kailan nyo gustong itake yung specific subjects um, on a certain quarter as long as matapos na yung 16 subjects. So, kaya siya nagiging mahirap kasi nung first quarter ko, yung mga kasama ko, mayroon silang nasa third quarter na. So, nung bala kong itake na subjects on my second quarter na tapos na nila or some uh, hindi pa nila bala kunin, wala talagang guarantee kung yung mga nakilala mo, nakmeet mo, ay eh magiging kaklase mo ulit next quarter. So, yun yung mahirap doon. Kasi, di ba, nag-develop na kayo ng friendship, nag-get to know na kayo, tapos, all of a sudden, after three months, iba na naman. Same goes with assessments. So, assessments ang tawag dito ng tests, or it could also be paperwork, or thesis paper, or whatever you call it. But it's, in general, it's called assessments. So, yung dalawang subjects ko every quarter, Meron kaming 10 weeks of classes doon. In that 10 weeks, one week is one class. So, ibig sabihin, meron akong two classes per week. And usually, fourth or fifth week, meron kayong kailangan na submit na assessment. And yon kung anong gusto ng lecturer nyo. It could be paper or something that you have to present or mag kayo sa exam. So, sa two years kong nag-aral dito, I think there was only a handful of exams that I took. Barely. Yeah. Yun. So, dumadagdag siya sa stress kasi 
sumasabay sila ng assessments, sumasabay sila ng deadline. And kung iisipin mo, di ba, one class per one week. So if ever group work yung, yung deadline yung on the fifth week, first day of classes, maghahanap ka na ng someone na pagkakatiwalaan mo. And most often than not, meron talaga mga hindi tumutulong, meron talaga na hindi nagko-cooperate. May, may time ata na nag-take ako ng tatlong subject in a quarter, as in lagari. Yeah. And when you are submitting your assessments online, meron tinatawag na turn it in. It's a website or something na basa na kaling siya sa account mo with your uni, and then dun ka magsasamit ng assessments mo. <laughs> you know, the first time I submitted an assessment, nagulat ako kasi when I submitted it, nagkaroon ng sort of like pop up na meron kang this percentage of similarity. So, ibig sabihin pala nun, si Turn It In, it checks kung meron kang copied content. It could be copied content from a book, copied content online, or, or same content na sinamit din ng ibang students sa current university mo and even sa ibang universities na gumagamit din ng Turn It In. May ganun palang system. So, I had to redo it. Mostly kasi kapag pinapipaste mo siya from Google, na recognize niya yon. So even if like may certain words ka lang na palitan, na recognize niya pa din yon. That's how smart Turnitin is. And yung mga lecturers namin, lagi kami nire remind if your similarity is more than 20%, that's a really bad paper. I'll just insert a tip here. Kailangan mag-submit kayo ng at least a few hours before the deadline para kapag mataas yung similarity nyo, then you can resubmit. Another thing kung bakit ko sinasabing mahirap is I don't like recitations. I don't personally like presentations at all. Ay. And dito wala hang kawala. I'm speaking for my uni kasi ang laki ng, ang laki ng room. So, alam mong hindi ka maririnig na lecturer mo pag doon ka sa dulo mo po. Or like you think maybe hindi ka natatawagan, hindi ka napipiliin kapag recitations, but no. I was wrong. Like I said, I'm speaking of Western Sydney kasi doon po ako nag-aaral. Each of the tables sa amin ay merong microphone. And each of the tables sa amin merong computer na malaki. <laughs> So, yeah, kapag tinawag kayo ng lecturer niyo, even if you speak so soft, everyone can still hear you. But if you love doing it, wala kayong problema dyan. The next subtopic is trabaho. So, mahirap ba? Mahirap ba maging student sa Australia in terms of work? And if that means mahirap kasi mahirap maghanap ng trabaho or mahirap magtrabaho habang nag-aaral, mahirap maghanap ng trabaho. That's one. As you probably already know, like, ano na ako, repetitive na ako. 20 hours lang pwede mag-work when you are on a student visa. And that being said, yung mga employers dito, like in the corporate companies, mostly hinahanap nila ay someone who can commit to doing full-time hours, someone who is a resident, someone who is a citizen. So, dun palang talo na tayo agad. Like, we can't apply for these jobs. So, ang mangyayari is we'll go for the odd jobs or we'll go for the casual jobs. And dahil nga labor-intensive yung mga ganong klaseng trabaho, so pagod na kayo physically and pagod din kayo mentally. So, yun lang naman yun for me. And the next subtopic is pamilya. Mahirap pa mag-aral sa Australia kasi namimiss mo yung pamilya mo kasi homesick ka. Of course! Yes! Mahirap kasi mag ka. Well, if you are. Mag-isa. Definitely nakaka nakakalungkot, nakaka depress, kaya sa sobrang dami ng iniisip mo, assessments, tabaho, pagod ka sa school, pagod ka sa tabaho, and then wala kang makausap, walang sasalo ng problema mo, wala kang kakape. That makes it hard to those students na sobrang attached nila sa family nila, sobrang dependent nila sa family nila until the day that they flew to Australia. That's gonna be very, very difficult for you. I'm gonna be honest. Kasi when you come here, you are going to be on your own. I personally have experience being independent. 
I was 16 when I moved out of the house and I moved to Manila. Hindi mo siya makumpara mga sisters. Yung galing kang probinsya, nag Manila ka, or even vice versa. Kasi anytime your family can just fly to Manila. And anytime, you know, pwede lang bumiyahe. But kapag nag-ibang bansa ka, kailangan ng family mo ng visa to be able to visit you. Minsan may mga time difference. Good thing na lang sa Australia, 2 to 3 hours lang. Yun, like ang hirap kapag wala kang matakbuhan. Kaya yun, nadidepress ka kasi wala kang makausap. Pwede na lang, pwede nang tumawag ngayon, di ba? Through internet. Pero, it's still very different kapag magkasama kayo. You might be wondering, paano naman yung mga friends mo? Di ba, nandito ka naman, you socialize, baka naman may mga friends ka matakbuhan. Pag isa kang immigrant and naka-student visa ka, actually mga sisters, you'll find that when you go to uni, most of the students are also on a student visa. So, pare-parehas kayong naghahanap buhay para magbayad ng tuition. Pare-parehas kayong galing tabaho, pagod, then kailangan mag-uni, tas uuwi, tabaho na naman bukas. To the point na nakakalimutan mo na mag-socialize, nakakalimutan mo na make friends. I mean, you may be able to make friends, pero wala nang, wala nang follow-through. Yung tipo, after uni, bye! That's it. Walang kakain sa labas kasi gastos yun. Walang inuman kasi another gastos yun. Magkakaroke kayo, gastos na naman. Tapos, pagod ka pa. Mas gusto mo lang umuwi, matulog. Yun yung mindset ng mga studyante dito. Speaking of myself, and yung mga nakasama ko sa uni dati. Yung mga classmates ko that turned out to be my friends ngayon. Pero ito naman mga sisters, Hindi, hindi ko to nakita sa mga taong PR na or sa mga taong citizens na dito nakaklase ko. Kasi, they don't have to worry, I guess. Ito lang yung maganda kapag citizen ka. If you study, pwede ka magkaroon ng student loan sa government and they'll pay for your tuition fees. Tapos kapag nagkaroon ka na ng trabaho, tsaka ka palang nila sisingilin sa inutang mo sa kanila. And portion lang yun ha, magkano lang yung kukuni nila sa sweldo mo. Yun naman, they could focus talaga sa school nila. But someone who is an international student, struggle talaga. And mahirap din makipag-friends. Kasi yung tinay ko was postgraduate. Mostly, yung mga nakasama ko din, kung hindi man sila international students, they are a full-time worker. So, nagtatabaho sila na full-time during the day and then they go to uni at night time. Or kung hindi man, may mga pamilya na sila. Kailangan nilang umuwi to take care of their children. Yung ganun, I salute those people na kaya nilang mag pag socialize pa kasi like i i couldn't i couldn't handle it like i i just i just don't have the time to kung aalis man ako it might be we're just celebrating kasi tapos na yung yung assessment namin or tapos yung quarter we are on a uni break yeah that's just how it is okay na din yun kasi di ba kung lagi kayo nagiinom dati after work then healthy living na kayo, di ba? Pagpunta nyo dito. <laughs> so, to sum it all up, mahirap ba maging estudyante dito sa Australia? What do you think? Anong una natin sinabi? Cost? Cost? Yes, mahal. Mahal mag-aral sa Australia. Cool? Yes, dami assessment. Lagi pa mga report, lagi pa may group work. Puro recitation. Lagi pa may case studies. Trabaho? Oo naman. 20 hours lang pwede mag-work. Ang hirap kaya makapagbayad ng tuition kung 20 hours ka lang pwede magtabaho. Ang hirap din makahanap ng tabaho kasi most of mga office jobs, dapat full-time worker. Mahirap malayo sa pamilya? Yes! Wala sila when you need them. Stress ka na mentally, stress ka pa emotionally, wala pang physical touch, you know? Walang yayakap sa inyo, walang mag-comfort sa inyo, wala. My friends, meron. Very limited. May time kayo para sa isa? No. So, mahirap? Certainly. Absolutely. Definitely. Yes. Mahirap. So, siguro sa isip nyo ngayon, ano ba, Z? Wala ka namang masabing maganda? Masyado mo namang kaming dinidiscourage. Well, kasi yun yung topic natin today. And I want you to realize it. Kasi behind all the glamour, 
Ito yung reality of living overseas. Ito yung reality of living sa abroad as a student. Ito yung mga kailangan na malaman nyo bago kayo pumunta dito, bago kayo makapag-decide na pumunta dito. Ito yung mga hindi nyo nakikita sa mga social media posts. But did I say it's not worth doing it anymore? No. You know, coming to Australia has taught me a lot and opened my eyes to a world full of surprises. I achieved greater heights that I never knew I was competent. I did some things that I didn't know I was capable and that, that I will ever do it. Did I say hindi kayo mag enjoy Nope. So occasionally, go travel. Occasionally, buy that bag, that shoes that you want to get because you totally deserve it. Life is short. Sa lahat ng sinabi ko and you still decide to come here, go for it. And cut! Thank you for watching. <laughs> Toodles!